How many of you, when you go to games, you sort of, and, I, and, and I, 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 I've seen some of you, so I know I already, how many of you go to games, you sort of act sort of supportive of your team? Now, God looks at not so much what the physical thing we do, but God looks at what, how our heart is pumping. So God doesn't see when we, when they do all the physical stuff, God is not looking at physical stuff. That's what the, sometimes in the church we've sort of tried to compare what people do when they're excited about their particular activity as opposed to God. God doesn't look at the physical thing that we do. He looks at what your heart is doing. Whether you raise your hand or stomp your feet or yell out, that doesn't impress God. What impresses God is where your heart is. What impresses a team, a team wants to hear you yell out their name and all things like that. That's okay too, but God is not impressed by that. God is only impressed by where your heart is. And sometimes in church, we try to emulate things that people do at arenas and stuff and say, this is what God likes. No, God does. God likes what, and only you know what your heart is doing. Only you. Your heart could be pumping or your heart could be just sitting there doing nothing. So God looks at the inside as opposed to the outside. But having said that, it's nice to hear cheers, isn't it? So the first uh, thing that showed that if you're a serious fan of the church, if you're a serious fan of the church, and if you're a serious fan of God, the first thing you do, you arrive early before the opening song. Check it off. You arrive early before. A great a fan will arrive early. They want to get there before the kickoff, before the first pitch. They don't want to get there after the midway. Not a good fan. A fan wants to be there to see all of it. You arrive early. 8 30. 8.29. <laughs> How many of you go to your favorite sport and get there late and love it? <laughs> All right, that's number one. <laughs> Yeah, arrive early. God wants a good fan can holly wait to get there when the doors are open. Sometimes they're in line before they open the doors. You see them standing there at the at the gate and they haven't you opened the door. What time the doors open? 9:30. What time are you here? It's 8:30 and you're already there. You very seldom see good committed fans coming in at halftime. Did we already check that one off? All right, okay. <laughs> Psalm 122, verse 1 and 2 says this. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I couldn't hardly wait to get there. I was excited. Before the opening kickoff, before the first pitch. Number two, a good fan, a real fan, a serious fan, don't mind staying late, savoring the, your victory in Jesus. You don't mind staying late. Your team won. You run on the floor and you just jump up and down. Nobody's leaving. Don't mind staying late. Some, some of us who arrive late as soon as the church is over, you wonder, ah, I got to go, I got to run. How many of you love to stay late and just hang around and just sort of enjoy your victory in Christ? Enjoy just savoring the moment. Man, I just had a good time. God had just blessed my soul, and I'm just going to just stay around and just enjoy this moment for a while. I'm just going to bask in the victory that Jesus has just given me, and I'm just going to hang with people who are like me. You check that one off. Is that good? All right, you check that one out. Who loves to hang around, just stay around, just... Who loves just get out of here? I got to get out of here. I got to go home. Yeah. You just had a great victory. Lord, 
God just has blessed your soul. He has done just so much for you. He has given you, given you the word. You have, you have eaten. You have fellowship. You have praised God. And you don't want to hang around and just enjoy it. Just sit around. Hey, I, I remember um, uh, at, at the basketball tournament, and, and when your team wins, or football game, when your team wins, and the, and the announcer said, no one has left the stadium. All on the field, jumping up and down. And then, and then when, when they are forced to leave the stadium, they go down on Fayetteville Street or somewhere in Raleigh and just tear up the place. They don't want to leave. Good fans just hang around all night long. That's number two. <laughs> number three, if you're a good fan of the Lord, you are not deterred by the weather in making your way to church. You are not deterred by the weather. You are not deterred by the weather in making your way to church. It's amazing. I was watching the, uh, uh, the uh, Green Bay one time and also other team, and it was snowing. I mean, it was like five feet of snow. It was just snowing. And, 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 and uh, the churches were closed. Everything was closed, but there were 50,000 people in the fan, in the stand. Can you imagine that? They would close down everything, but if the Giants are playing Dallas and New York and it's five feet of snow on the ground, I don't know how people get to the stadium because they can't get to church when there are two inches of rain. They must have different vehicles for driving to the game and driving to church. Is that right? Because how many of us go to Friday night football game in the cold and the rain and the wind? I got a call. It was, it was, it was raining in Raven. Pastor, we having church tonight. Bible study. I said, it's raining in Raven. Well, it may. <laughs> Do we have different cars for different events? How can 50,000 people get to the football game and nobody can get to church? I don't know. The Bible, Paul said this in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27. I have, been in labor, I have been in labor and hardship through many sleepless nights in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure, cold and naked, but I met it anyway. And so sometimes... A good church fan, the weather doesn't stop him or her. It's amazing. Uh, when, whenever we have a, 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 a dust shower, not, a, not, not snow flurries, a dust, a snow showers, schools are closed and, and, and sporting event, uh, not sporting events are not closed, and the mall isn't closed, but the church is closed. We can't go to church today because uh, it's too much snow. You want to go to the mall with me? How does that work? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, check number three now. Is anybody get all three so far? You, you right on target right now. Don't tell me. Don't, don't share it. This is a private test. <laughs> um. But anyway, you, you, you see, you see the, 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 the crazies, and especially the cheese heads in, heads in uh, Green Bay, uh, and they're sitting there with no shirts on and, and the cold weather, and, and, and man, don't let it. And then you see them in, uh, at baseball games and, and football games and, and tennis match in sweltering heat. But don't let it get a little warm in church. We got to leave, Pastor. It's too hot in here. Where are you going? I'm going out in the sun <laughs> where it's really hot. Okay, number, <laughs> all right, number three. You, this is a self-test now, number three. A good fan, 
you want the best seat in the house. Now, that's, that's just, if you're a good fan, you don't want to be in the nosebleed section. I remember going to a, sh well, they were, what were they before they were Bobcats? Hornets. Somebody gave me some tickets. Gave me some tickets. One of my good church friends. And so I went to this, and so I, 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 I took my son, we went to this uh, Bobcat, no, Hornets in Charlotte. And we were up like that. I said, never again will nobody give me tickets. <laughs> I appreciate the fact, but if you're going to give me tickets, give me, the <laughs> give me something on the front row. A good fan wants the best seats in the house. What is the best seat in the house for in church? I don't know where you can see. I don't know. Uh, but a good fan, the, the uh, disciples said this, John 13, 23. Three, when uh, Jesus was at the uh, at his last supper, uh, first last supper, and and um, the disciples were sitting there, and John uh, wanted the best seat in the house, and the Bible says one of them, that is John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. He wanted to be right next to Jesus, wherever the best seat. Now, now I, I don't know about physically what the best seat in the house is, but. You want to be where the action is, where you can see everything. If somebody stands in front of you, then uh, you don't like it. You want to see everything. And so a good fan wants the best seat in the house or in the church, wherever the best seat is. And sometimes that is usually the front row seat. But very few people like to sit on the front row. How many of you ever sat on the front row? Four. F five. Five people. <laughs> what is it about the, would you like to be on the 50-yard line of the Dallas and, and Washington Redskin game in October? Front row. Front row. A good fan wants to be on the front row. All right, you're checking this off now. You're checking it off. Okay, here we go again, another one. Another one. Then we're going to see another clip. Uh, let me see. Number one, a, you arrive, a good fan arrive early, right? Number two, you don't mind staying and saving the victory, staying late. And number three, you are not deterred by the weather. And number four, you want the best seat in the house. And number five, you seldom miss a church service. You seldom miss a church service. I mean, it's, it's almost anathema. It's a curse. You, it, it, it's unusual for you to miss a Sunday service. A good fan is always there most of the time. When it comes to football games, uh, or, or if, if you are in that area where you can go, uh, or basketball games, or, 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 or um, Friday night basketball or football, Friday night football, most people like to be there at every game. Good fans do. And man, if it's a main event, if it's a, if it's a playoff or something, you'd never miss it. So a good fan seldom miss a church service. And if you do miss one, you have a very good, good reason. You were sick. You couldn't get out of bed. You had to go take care of mom. Something, you, you, you're not just sitting around watching TV. A good fan never misses a church service. This is what the Bible says in Acts 2. Every day they continue, every day the early church, not every weekend, every day they continued to meet together in the temple. They broke bread in their homes. They had victory parties. They ate together and, they, and with glad and sincere heart, praising God, enjoying the favor and of all the people. They were tailgating all the time. Good fans do all of that. 
they very seldom miss church service. We got people, and, 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 and everybody has their own way, we got people who plan to miss, I, I, I go to church twice a month. What you going to do, to, I, I'm just going to take off. If you're a good fan, you very seldom miss your team, you know, especially your home game, your home game. So a good fan very seldom miss church service, very seldom. So that's number five. All right, number six. I think I like this one because I looked it up last night on the computer and I was trying to find out how much things cost. A good fan, church fan, never complain about giving to the church their tithes or offerings. They give it as much. They never complain about giving because they, cause they get the money. They don't mind giving to God because God is giving them their money's worth. How much do you pay, pay for tickets to a uh, football game? Basketball tickets, about $20, $25, something like that, $45. Uh, football ticket, um, Depends on who's playing. Uh, if you sit high up to about hundred to uh, hundred, about ninety to two hundred dollars or something like that, uh, ninety to four hundred dollars. Somebody tell me if I'm wrong. Um, if you if it's a good game, fifty, 50 yard line takes about three thousand dollars, right? Somewhere like that. Yeah, and we don't complain, do we? About the high cost of tickets, we go. We go. We go. And, and, and so, because we let, we get our money's worth. Well, a good church fan never complains about giving to the Lord because God has blessed me more than I could ever give him. They never complain about giving. They never say, I'm giving too much. Because as the old song says, you can't beat God giving. Will a man rob God? How have you robbed me? You robbed me in your tithes and your offerings. I testify that you gave, they gave as much as they were able to and even beyond their ability. That's taught the Macedonian. And so a good fan of a church never complains about money. A good football fan, when he or she goes to watch a match, they never, they buy the ticket, they don't complain because they know they're going to enjoy the game. And that's where we should be too. But many, many of us church fans, we complain about what? Money. Money. Even at this church, we complain about money. We don't even pass the plate. Isn't that amazing? We don't even pass the plate. And some people still complain about giving. Anybody ever go to a church where they pass the plate? Often. Several times a service. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we don't, so we, but, but if you're a fan, if you see God at work, money becomes secondary. If you see your team, uh, I don't mind paying if, 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 when the Panthers play because I don't mind. I don't mind paying. <laughs> when Cam is throwing to Smith. I went to Augusta to see Tiger. <laughs> don't, don't ask me how much that be, idiot. Don't ask. Did I complain? Of course not. So, so <laughs> all right. I do have my Tiger shirt on, but I'm not going to. All right. Okay. <laughs> Uh, this is what the, uh, uh, the Macedonians, they never complain about giving to the Lord. I like, like how Paul, um, Paul writes about their, their, their giving attitude. He said, I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability entirely on their own. They urgently uh, pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's work. And they exceeded our expectation. They urgently pleaded with us, let us help the Lord's work. That's what they said. Let us help the Lord's work. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord, and then uh, they will, uh, the will of, by the will of God, also to us. So a good church fan never complain about giving for ticket prices. 
Okay, and this is a big one. Everybody says it's a big one. This is a big one. A good church fan never get upset about paying the preacher. Everybody says it's a big one. Because he's worth it. <laughs> LeBron James is worth $100 million. Serena is worth no, the LeBron worth 110 million. Serena is worth 100 million. Don't feel bad about Venus. She's worth 50, 60 million. I, I mentioned Merriweather last night met 41.5 million dollars. Is anyone complaining? Let me see if I got some salaries here. Of some people, maybe a couple. I don't know. Let me just see. Tiger Woods is worth $650 million, almost over half a billion. Shaquille O'Neal, what is he doing? He's still worth $35 million. And Kobe, I don't know why, when was the last time he played a good game? $33 million. <laughs> I make $40,000 a year, you complain. God, Lord! <laughs> they are throwing the ball. I'm throwing Christ. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> a, good, a good fan never complains. Who complains about LeBron getting... Uh, signing a ninety million dollar Nike contract. Who uh, <clears throat> Eighth one. This is something for the kids. A good fan read the Bible regularly and memorize scripture. A good fan reads the Bible regularly and memorizes scripture. And they know the rules. They know, they, they, they know what the Bible has to say. And so in terms of sports, a good fan, now all of us know what this means in, if we play football, don't we? Touchdown, don't we? A good fan knows that. Um, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a very good fan knows that, don't we? Safety, right away. Who didn't know that? Raise your hand. But a fan, did, a fan knew it, didn't they? Right away. A good fan. I saw uh, Miss uh, uh, Dotson was telling the choir uh, to sing it over again. But a good fan knows, what's this in football? Illegal procedure. Right away, you knew that. A good fan. And so a good fan knows, uh, a good church fan knows how many verses in the Bible. Oh, <laughs> that's a bad question. <laughs> if you're in football, you do like this. What is this? Well, time out. Oh, okay. You, maybe you're not. Let, let me get a basketball one, and maybe you're not football fans. I need some football players in here. Okay. Um, now, if you're not a basketball fan, fan, you wouldn't know this, but the referee calls this. What is this? Blocking. Yeah, a good fan knows that. A good basketball fan knows that. Uh, if a player coming in and he offensive foul, a good trade fan, how many chapters in the Bible? That's books. <laughs> a good church fan knows the rule book. <laughs> if, if, a, if a guy does this um, uh, in, in basketball, this is what? Uh, what, what is it? Also, it's holding, isn't it? Yeah. And so a good church fan. So uh, there are how many uh, chapters in the Bible? There are, what, 1,189 chapters in the Bible? A good church fan knows that. There are 66 books in the Bible. A good church fan knows that, don't they? 
a good church fan knows that 31,000 verses. I mean, we've been reading it for the last 20 years. We've got to know something. I mean, when you play the game, you know the rules. Uh, do you know, um, Brother Stewart and I were talking about this, and, 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 and Brother Stewart is, is a connoisseur of golf rules. He knows golf rules quite well. And Tiger Woods got penalized two days ago uh, for uh, moving the ball. He didn't move the ball. He moved a leaf, and the ball just moved just slightly, uh, just very slightly. Well, in golf, any time the ball changes position, if it just moves slightly, uh, it is a penalty, a one-stroke penalty if you place it back, a two-stroke penalty if you don't place it back. But you know that because you play golf. So if somebody said, what's John 3.16, you just know that right away, don't we? Yeah. Or Romans 3.23, it's right on our lips, isn't it? <laughs> okay, you make the call. Uh, the Bible says this in Psalm 119, verse 11. I have hidden your word in my heart. With my lips I recite your word. I rejoice in following your word as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your word and consider your ways. I delight in your word. I will not neglect your word. That's what a good church fan does of the Lord. And the last one before we go, um, and we just saw this with Indiana versus Kentucky, uh, but a good church fan will express your passions for the Lord without feeling ashamed. You don't mind letting people know how you feel about the Lord. When your team wins, you just jump up and down, you yell, you don't care. Um, I think last week uh, the Eagles beat the Redskins, didn't they? And the Seattle beat the Panthers. And Dallas, anyway. Um, <laughs> but you don't mind people knowing, do you? You don't mind people knowing. Well, this is what the Bible says about us when it comes to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty, in his mighty heavens. Praise him for all his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the keyboard. Praise him with drums and dancing. Praise him with strings and the organ. Let every breath, let every person that has breath, praise the Lord. A good thing, you don't mind, and I know you don't have to, but you don't mind people knowing that you love the Lord and something's good happened. You don't mind saying, thank you, Jesus. You don't mind that. Because if your team is winning, you say, go, 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 go. And the person sitting next to you could care less. It should happen the same way in God's church. If you want to say, thank you, Jesus, say, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Now, just be respectful when you do it. Um, just be respectful. Sometimes you sit beside somebody at a football game, and, and they be saying, go team, and slap you in the face. Don't do that. You know, or they stand up in front of you to spill their beer on you, something like that. Um, be respectful, but you don't mind them doing it. So now, um, let's take our test. If you got eight. To sometimes I'm still a child of God. Amen. Even when somebody tells me something, I'm still a child of God. Amen. Even when I feel bad and I fall on my face, I'm still a child of God. Because Amen. Amen. positionally, God sees me as holy. 